seconds till showtime. Ease the seat back. Are you ready for another edition of I Didn't Know That? I am Finish Him, along with my co-host Mike Stouffer. And Mike, are you ready? I am ready. To throw up some graphics. Yes. As tonight, we are happy to welcome back psychic, psychic Gregory Nicholas. Tonight. And back with a wine tasting, the wine professor. There we go, Jared Gray. Yeah. And from the Weaver School, Miss Susie, yeah. our new third wheel, our third <laughs> third co-host, third co-host. I'm, I'm third happy wheel. to, I'm happy to have. It. So, where's my mouse? I lost my mouse. There we go. Let's, we'll fade that out. I, I recently lost four mice in my house. You know, I've been putting the cat... The cat likes to... I have this back room that was... It was an addition that was built on later. So, there are windows in the kitchen that used to go outside that now go into this back room. And the cat will stay on the kitchen table and look out there every night because I'm she's spotting a mouse somewhere. So, I have to I let her out there to see if... She can finally rid that room of mice forever. Because actually, they're pretty crafty. Like, they like found a way to get a Snickers bar open and ate half of it. Really? And they didn't even throw the wrapper away. They just left it wow, there. Wow, they just left ate half a Snickers bar? A half Snickers bar. Did you do... Well, uh, I mean, dental, no, did you, did you, was there Snickers any really satisfies. Uh, What's that? Well, could you do a... Uh, what do they call it the, the, the when they use the teeth to identify who... who who did a crime or something? Oh, dental because implants or did they yeah, do any the dental, dental records? And, yeah, and I'm just curious if they matched yours. Mm. What are you drinking? It's a rosé. You're not supposed to drink that until Jared comes on. Did you know that? Did you not read the memo? No. No drinking wine know. until Jared comes on. Yeah. You should be ashamed of yourself. I am, except we we have a very exciting show, so it's kind of. I'll, I'll I'll put my shame aside for a few minutes and then we'll, we'll that's talk good. about that's that. That's good. Um, yeah. By the way, the um, Deirdre said that she just shared the Air Guitar Eastern Regional event on the show page. Did I'm finish at, him sign up yet? I'm working out my act, and I'll have news on that next week. Really? Yeah. That is excellent. Kim McBride says, "Hey, hey, hey!" Or, Not hey, drinking hey, rosé. This is everyone. pink water. Pink water, yes, yes. Big Dave is with us this evening. Hi, Big Dave. Oh, pink water, keep on sipping. <laughs> Bobby Pickens, our Bobby, hello. Hey, Bobby. Andy Bruno. And by the way, uh, you guys should friend up Andy Bruno. He does a show most Saturday nights at 9 o'clock. Does a great job on his uh, show. What kind of Good show? To see you. He, he does, he plays uh, guitar and sings, acoustic guitar. He's been in a great 80s band. Uh, and he's just, a, he's one of those guys that's, it's his, he's as fun to watch as he is to listen to. Oh, that's great. What? I'll friend, I, didn't I friend, friend him up? I should, I feel like I friended Andy and, and Josh. And, um, let's see here. Uh, oh, Amy. Thank you, Amy. Bob follows directions as good as Mike does. You know, it's always good when your employees come on, you know, from, the, from the mortgage side, they come on and they, they want to mm. harass me. Um, so thank you, Amy, for that. We'll talk tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. sharp. No sleeping in. Um, you got it, Andy? And Michael Bonanno. Mike, uh, you're, you're slated to come on next week. I hope you know that. We were exchanging some emails. I think you uh, had some really good ideas, so we have you uh, slated to come on. So I hope and I'm, you I'm are trying to get my friend ready. I'm trying to get uh, Jack Butler back on. We're just trying to work out some of those compliance issues that allow him to come on without interference from the higher ups. And uh, because what I want to talk to him about is cryptocurrency, what it is, because I I'm having a hard time wrapping my brain around it's it's basically software, and um, we don't know who invented it. 
So I'm very curious about what. Uh, well, actually, how, how I have works. the I we yeah, have the the person now. There is a gentleman who is uh, Japanese, I believe, who wrote the original paper on Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Are you aware of that, Bob? Yes, but he goes okay. by a name right, that's right, a pseudonym, actually, which, which I can't recall right now. Mm -hmm. But um, as you know, you know, the cryptocurrencies have really taken off. I have my theories on why it's taken off. And mm -hmm. I can tell you one thing. I don't think you're going to get Jack on to talk about it. I talked to him last night. He'd love I to talk about it. Really? I, 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 I don't believe he's I don't think he can do it. I don't think he can talk about it. Seriously. <laughs> Like, I mean, legally, he can't talk about it? Right. Yeah. I don't well, think he can talk about it. That's... I don't think... I... Yeah, that's what... Well, that's what we're trying to work out, because I'm very curious. I'm sure everybody... He's, just he's to explain to to what it. it is. Well, what, what do you it's mean It's not giving it advice. All right, all right. So let me ask you a question. Have you okay. ever gone to Chuck E. Cheese? Of course. And you take your dollars and you put them in the slot machine and out come the little coins. The little tickets. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Little you get tickets the, the little and, coins. and you get the coins. That's coins. cryptocurrency. Right. That's all it is. Yeah. I mean, you're just exchanging U.S. dollars for another form of a payment. Now, the original usage of it, in my opinion, was very was very good because it was about low fees and it was about easy ledger um, settling. Mm -hmm. OK, um, but that's not what it's become. Um, what it's become now is, in my opinion, a, a major uh, problem. Uh, Wall Street is dark well money. Well, yeah, it's it's so it's so it's basically used by you know by money launderers. Okay, sure. Um, and it becomes very suspicious when you see some major corporations accepting payment in Bitcoin. Uh, it makes you wonder, um, you know, how those companies are doing financially if they are accepting that and who they're trying to get. Uh, organized or who they're trying to uh, bring in and to to those companies um, but there's there's really I mean what what's happened now is they are now feed to death um, and what that means is, is Wall Street's got its hands in it now and they're making money on it it's like the Robin Hood apps okay so what they're doing is is they're making money on the flow and we should you could talk to Jack about what the flow is and then from what I also with something that we talked about was that it's because it's viewed more as property than currency by the U.S. government from a tax pur purpose. Any gains that you make on that is capital gains and it comes Correct. in as it comes in as ordinary income, which the tax ramifications as opposed to different types of investing, I guess, are a little more stringent. Well, it's not it's not a, it's not a currency. And, and, right. and you know what else is not a currency is gold. You know that's right. that is that is that is fallacy to it's think stuff. that gold is a currency. No, gold it's a is, it's a precious metal. It's a commodity. It's a commodity yeah. is all that it is. Like um, corn. Correct. And do you know what legitimizes the currency? Faith in the currency. Use of the currency. What sanctioning the what, of the currency. What the government accepts taxes in is what right. legitimizes a currency. You look, the bottom line is, is you will never, ever, 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 ever unseat the U.S. dollar. Um, same thing for silver. That's a, exactly correct. Bob. Do you think that stops people from trying to unseat the dollar? You can't. You can't unseat because the United States will go to war with you if you try to unseat the dollar. I mean, yeah. what people just don't understand is. You don't mess with the U.S. dollar. It just, I mean, it, you're just not going to do it. Look, you know, um, that's the reason why we have such a tight relationship with Saudi Arabia, because in 1971, the Saudis agreed to sell oil only in U.S. dollars. And for that, we give them military protection, which is why they continue to lead the world in human rights violations or be a leader in human rights violations. And we look the other way because they still sell oil it's in Dollars. Well, that's, that's something big, that, that's, I mean, that's, that's something win. to try to achieve, you know, leading the world in something. You got to lead yeah. the world in something. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but, but, you know, and, and talking about oil, that there was an interesting thing. The anti Biden people, and I'm just going to say, I, I'm not trying to make a pro Biden statement. I'm just, the anti Biden people have blamed um, President Biden for the, for this 
surging oil prices that we now have, which is not accurate at all. Um, it's just it's just uh, OPEC has decided to cut the um, the amount of oil that they're that they're sending out, and there's an increased expectation of demand. So you have less supply and you have more demand, and that will that will uh, raise prices. But getting back to your cryptocurrency, um, I, I probably didn't answer it for you, but but it's very troubling that places like PayPal uh, and Square. Um, and Tesla are now accepting uh, that as a payment mechanism. Um, but considering uh, that uh, its its value is very volatile right now. Yeah, yeah. Why yeah. would you? I, yeah. I, I I don't understand why anybody would want to trade in their dollars for. Um, I don't. I just don't want anybody would trade in U.S. dollars for anything else. I mean, unless you're going to another country. You know, there's just no yeah. reason to give up the dollar. So, um, so, and we can get Jack on. He can be a lot more eloquent than I. Uh, yeah, it's just, yeah. I think the only good thing about about blockchain, uh, and Josh had it properly uh, stated, blockchain is that mm-hmm. is the distributed ledger technology. It's the technology behind it that makes it so valuable. And I just, I really think that once Wall Street ends up making enough fees on it. The uh, central banks will all steal the technology and uh, we'll all go back to uh, normal living. And all those investors, I wouldn't call them investors. I would call them all those gamblers in cryptocurrency. Correct. Will end up. I mean, I, I was very shocked to see what's the one thing D-O-G-E, do, Doge. 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 I mean, I, I mean, it was amazed to watch the Good Doge, New York bad Times. Doge. It was Doge Day and I was I was I was very I was very disheartened to see major media like the New York Times making a big um, thing about that because I just think it's uh, I have nothing good to say yeah they were in so we Times Square know. singing who let the doge out were they really no they weren't <laughs> oh, I thought that was really good sorry well Bob I so, made it up well I thought that was really good you certainly had me believing <laughs> I was a believer so why don't we uh, bring on our fourth generation psychic medium and spirit communicator, or is it communicator? Um, communicator. Greg, Greg Nicholas is going to talk to us hey. about Puts signs me back in the center from square. spirit. Which, <laughs> hey guys. which I, how are you doing? I'm well, thanks. You guys? Oh, excited! It's always fun to have you on. Talk to you. I, I, the, you're just you're just what you know, what you see is always amazing to me and uh i'm always delighted when you say hey i want to come on the show and talk about this and this time it's gonna it's you said signs from spirit Correct. and by the way for those of you that are interested in getting in touch with greg we are scrolling email phone number mm-hmm. and facebook page as he talks yes. and Very i good. highly recommend that you get in touch with greg because he uh-huh. is Great. Thanks. And now that we set the bar extremely high, uh, Greg. So I, I've had a question that I wanted to start this off with. Mm-hmm. I notice in all your posts, you always say spirit mm-hmm. in the singular. It's never spirits. Like I had somebody last night that said, we're going to have Greg to come on and talk about spirits. And I said, you know what I've noticed is he always writes it in the singular. And I said, I wanted to ask him about that. And I don't know if that's a good question or not a good question, but I was just curious. It's a fair question. Yeah, my, it's a fair question. It's just, and not only me, but uh, my peers, whenever we're talking, we always just talk about spirit. I think for me, it's because when I am honing in on one thing at a time, I'm trying to hone in on one spirit at the time. Um, Splitting hairs, maybe, but I'd rather focus on one spirit at a time than have five or six around uh, coming through to me. But uh, spirit or spirits, um, yeah, really no difference. But uh, okay. no, valid question, Mike. Fair question. And Andy quickly wrote in and said spirits equals alcohol. So maybe you're just trying to dis- distinguish. Well, the hey, there are times I need it. I mean, <laughs> you and I have had some conversations. You know that. 
Oh, your conversations are always illuminating. I mean, they're just fantastic. I love, I love your stories. They're just great. <laughs> oh, feel they're free there. to yeah. feel free to share any of them as uh, as we talk. Uh, um, well, I I can. Um, uh, I had one a couple of weeks ago from a young lady. Uh, I was doing my thing, and uh, this is one you have not heard yet. Um, I kept getting a letter and names B Beatrice B E A Beatrice. And I kept tasting, uh, and sometimes I taste signs, as we'll talk about in a minute. Um, I kept tasting tobacco. And I thought, well, I don't know what this means. And the longer I got into it, I kept asking her. I said, well, is Grandma or someone named B or Beatrice? Well, it was Grandma B. And I said, did she chew? And she said, yeah, she used to like to take a chew. And so I was tasting the tobacco. Oh, wow. That Grandma came through. And that was not too long ago. That's mm-hmm. incredible. <laughs> yeah. I'm How, never what, what does that taste like? What does that taste like? I mean, are you like, oh. Yeah. Well, it's like you're. I'm sitting here talking to you, uh, or, you know, and it was all at once. It's like, what's that taste in my mouth? It can be metal. It can be, in this case, it was tobacco. It can be wine or something like that. Uh, and that's just one of the signs from spirit is that, uh, and that's the way grandma chose to come through to let her granddaughter know that it was grandma B and she enjoyed to chew every now and then. Wow. So yeah. when, when, when a spirit communicates with you, I like, I think, you know, the, the perception is, is that, you know, it's almost like a conversation, like their living being communicates that way. What's the difference? Like, I mean, even like, I, I can't, you know, that does a spirit function the same way from like a mental processing state as a living as a living person after the soul oh. moves on so what what's the communication like is it bits and pieces is it feelings is it sensations all of the above see hear feel smell dream all of them okay uh signs from spirit people often say when i do workshops or something guys what am i going to see well maybe nothing you may see, you may hear, you may feel or smell, and in this case, taste. I tasted Grandma B's tobacco. Um, many, many familiar signs that uh, we've all heard over the years are uh, pennies from heaven. Uh, it, and not uncommon, after someone passes, they may put coins in your way. Now, that doesn't mean you reach down under the seat of the car or between the cushions of the couch and bring out a handful of coins and, you know, there's a sign from somebody. No, not at all. They have to be in a very unique and unusual place, um, meaning, you know, you were going upstairs and everything was fine. You come down and there's a penny in the middle of the steps. Well, that's from someone saying hello. Some of the more common ones are cardinals. There is a belief out there that cardinals are spirits saying hello. Now, they very well can be. Um, If you uh, feel that, that's fine. Uh, I always try and advise people let's temper that especially this time of year we do live in ohio and there are cardinals all over but if you keep seeing the same cardinal maybe at the same time every day for several days in a row then that is a very good sign it is someone from spirit um a big caution i always tell everybody is say someone is gone and uh you ask them to give you a sign please do not stipulate meaning you know move the picture or move a bottle uh, it may not happen because we are on spirit time, guys, and uh, we're gonna things are gonna happen in uh, in spirit. Um, uh, cardinals are very good uh, this time of year, as are butterflies in the summer. People may see butterflies, and that uh, resonates with them. If that means something for you, that is fantastic. Um, keep it. If you do find the coins, whether it be pennies, nickels, or quarters, dimes, I always say keep them as a sign from. Uh, a sign from spirit or spirits that they are there to say hello. Um, Another one, feathers. Okay. Feathers in an unusual spot. Uh, uh, They, they, they show up uh, just randomly and that's a sign from spirit. People like to say that sometimes those are angel feathers. Well, you know, maybe, but I prefer to call them just a a very comforting sign from, uh, from uh, someone who has passed on, whether it be a family or a friend. Very important is, People think you always have to get signs from spirit of someone who is a family member who has passed. Not true. It can be a close friend. Um, it could be someone you were close to and haven't seen for many years who has uh, since since died and wanting to come say hello. Um, 
very strong sign. You're at home, you're walking around and all at once say, great grandma's picture falls over for no reason. It could be her saying hello. Now, if someone walks in the house and the door slams, well, you know, we try and debunk that a little bit, uh, but that that's one good way. Um, scents are a fantastic way. Smells. You may smell someone's cooking. Uh, tobacco, uh, a pipe, things like that. Um, I see right now someone put in 1111. That is a very, very good sign. That is more of a sign from the angels, uh, new beginnings, balance, something like that. Um, and again, right there, Kim's talking about 1111. That's fantastic. Yes. Um, smells are very good. Spirits like to play with electricity and water. Uh, lights flickering, uh, whether it be a nightlight, a light in the house, whatever. Uh, your cell phones, too. Many times when I go to do uh, a paranormal ghost hunt at one of uh, many uh, uh, locations throughout the area, um, cell phones will get drained. Batteries and cameras will get drained. That is just one way of um, uh, of spirits saying hello. Uh, sometimes they can be tricksters as well. Uh, just someone playing a game with you. Um, uh, in addition to that, I always like to say dreams. Dreams are a fantastic way, guys, because we are unconscious. At times we can be uh, perhaps in our most vulnerable. Uh, dreaming, and you may dream of pets, um, you may dream of, uh, of a family member as well. Um, also, when you are asleep is a good time to feel spirits or animals. You're comfortable. Many times during a reading, something will come through. Uh, say you're just getting ready to roll over. You're comfortable. You may feel a presence on the side of your bed, gently sitting so as not to disturb you. Um, that could be uh, a significant other or whoever sitting on the bed just to let you know that they are saying hello, okay? Um, another very important sign I don't wanna let go is orbs. Uh, whether you uh, take them in pictures, in mirrors, or you can just be sitting around and seeing them. Uh, orbs, uh, say you take a picture perhaps at a cemetery or at a uh, uh, facility that is uh, alleged to be haunted. Uh, you may get uh, the, uh, the uh, small balls in the picture now. Let's try and temper that as well. Could they be dust? Yes. I am under the belief myself that if you do an orb and you zoom in and you expand it, you may see a face in there. And that's very good. Okay. Um, pets are coming through a lot more lately. I do pick up a lot of pets when I'm, believe it or not, at a horse farm. I do readings or events at a couple of horse stables throughout Ohio. And uh, that is a fantastic location because of, of the, uh, the animal uh, energy along with the equine energy that comes through as well. Um, uh, like I said, electric is very good. Lights flickering. Water sometimes will turn off and on. Uh, orbs are very good as well. Um, what about objects moving? Very important. Uh, say someone in life had uh, trouble with keys. They may try and move your keys. Okay, or shoes. You may come up with one shoe missing. That's another sign. Uh, granted, that may be a little bit more complex and you may get a little bit irritated with yourself as to where did I put my keys or my shoe, uh, but nonetheless, still a very good sign from spirit. Um, don't forget about hearing voices, singing. You may be sitting there re really relaxed and hear someone's laughter or hear mom or someone saying hello in mom's voice just as a comfort thing. All signs from spirit. Again, see, hear, feel, smell, dream, all your senses, taste. Um, like I said, the, the tobacco thing was very good. Uh, guys, we had a conversation before we went on air about uh, uh, a taste uh, that came through and uh, it, it's very true. The biggest part is, the hardest part is to believe it, okay? You may I have say, a, oh, I have a, taste I have a question mind. for you, Greg. Oh. How important is relaxation from your standpoint or from anybody's standpoint in being able to recognize spirit in all these different senses that you're talking about? It helps, Mike, a lot. Many times I recommend to people who want to contact somebody or anybody, they meditate. I am a very big believer in meditation with music playing, but with no words. OK, I find at least for me and some of the people I've worked with, words tend to be rather suggestive. Uh, meditation, music, whether it be uh, 
the ocean or crystal bowls. You're relaxed, you're meditating, and in your mind, you're asking, what is it I need to know today? And that's when you're relaxed and you may see, hear, feel, smell, or dream, everything. Again, we as people tend to be fixated on what we may in fact see. Uh, and I understand it, but I always encourage people to have all their senses open, uh, whether it be in meditation, uh, say you're trying to con uh, connect someone who has passed, whether it be grandpa. Right now, it's very busy, unfortunately, with the people who have passed from COVID. A lot of people want to try and contact somebody. I always suggest uh, meditate, relax, and go with what you're feeling as well. Uh, you may be meditating and you may just start um, getting something on your ear, like a flicking on your ear. Well, that could resonate because that could be, say, grandpa uh, doing that. Um, one incident that happened uh, recently, I was uh, with uh, a couple. I did not know why they came to me for a very private reading. And I didn't know, but all at once I started to smell baby lotion. Okay. Hmm. Um, and I, I try and be very cautious and respectful with that. Uh, regarding the baby lotion. And finally, I asked him, I said, have you in some manner lost or miscarried a child? Uh, they did. Uh, the child was still born. It lived about four hours, little boy. And they, in their home, smell baby lotion. To them, it was just a validation that they were, in fact, smelling, uh, smelling the fragrance that resembles their son, uh, who uh, passed um, about a year and a half ago, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, relaxation is key. However, spirit can hit us upside the head at any time. You could be in the kitchen cooking dinner. Uh, you could be doing uh, working at your desk doing paperwork. And again, you may all at once hear something. You could hear footsteps and you know you're alone. You could be uh, smelling something and it's like, say, uh, lilies. Oh, wow. Well, that was mom's favorite scent or mom's favorite flower. You're getting lilies. And that, that's just her saying hello uh, for any one of a number of reasons, maybe just to say hello, or in fact, to perhaps calm you down. Uh, are you having a uh, rough day? Uh, it can be. How, how do we develop it? I mean, do you, do you, uh, you've mentioned seminars in the past. Mm -hmm. I know due to COVID we've not, there, those have not right. been going on, but right. how can we all develop this? And if so, what do we need to do to enhance this? Oh, sure. Uh, first part guys. Yes, we all can. Um, is the want the desire to, in fact, develop that. Um, this is the hard part. You develop it uh, and then believing it. Okay. That's, that can be the other hard part as well. Uh, I, whenever I do a workshop or a seminar, I always uh, suggest people meditate first. Again, what is it I need to know today? You're relaxed. You may have to focus on a candle flame and be aware of see, hear, feel, smell, everything we all have it it it's a lot easier than it sounds because you don't need all the preparation and things like that i tell people to come to an open mind uh come with an open mind rather and we just start uh uh relaxing and uh, and going through that as well um the biggest signs though guys are uh, the orbs from spirit now people think they all have to be in your um uh, camera. No, they do not. You can see them just sitting around sometime. So uh, it, uh, they're, they're all over. They're, the signs are all over. Uh, it's not just um, uh, one or two. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think Susie might have a couple of questions for you. Hi, yes. Greg. Hey, Suze. What's up? Hey, what can you tell me about dragonflies? Dragonflies are a very good sign as well. Uh, they're, I, I, I personally actually prefer them. Myself, Susie, when they come through in the summer or warmer months coming through, a lot of times I have noticed dragonflies may tend to light on a flower when you're around. Uh, signs from spirit, excellent sign. Excellent sign, Susie. Dragonflies, butterflies, um, ladybugs are another big one. Uh, hummingbirds in terms of animals as well, Susie. But uh, a lot of times people uh, tend to relate to the dragonflies or the hummingbirds to someone who liked them when they were alive, when they were still with us. Or many times 
um, you know someone who's getting ready to pass and they may say, I will come to you in the form of, or when you see a dragonfly or a, um, a monarch butterfly or a white moth, that's me. But dragonflies are very spiritual. To me, they can be uplifting and a sign of rejuvenation as well. Believe it or not, some people like to say bats are signs of someone too. There was, you, when you were talking about um, how spirit will tend to like to play with electricity and stuff, I was, while you were doing this, I was uploading these pictures. I don't know if they're inter interesting or not, but um, I was in what was called one of the most haunted theaters in the United States, which is the Bijou in, um, it's, not, it's not Nashville, it's uh uh, where's Tennessee? Where's Where's the University of Tennessee? Uh, oh, okay. Memphis, Shot Lexington. No, Lexington. Uh, yeah, no, that's Kentucky. Yeah, Kentucky. Uh, where's the, Where's the B? Uh, Knoxville. Thank no. you. Um, so most of it, like the like the office tower side of it, most of it's been restored, but they've stayed out of the fourth floor, and mm -hmm. it's crazy. As you you can go up there and explore, and as you go up there, um, now this was. It was once a military hospital. It was wow. a, a, a sanitarium at one point, mm -hmm. and you know it's like it was it was a civil war um, crematorium or something like that at one point. Wow! And um, so I just kind of went up and explored a little bit, and then I just was holding my phone at my side, and all of a sudden it just starts taking just random pictures. Yeah, I wasn't even you know they're and they're kind of creepy. There's just yeah, yeah. You know, Spirits can just start. Oh, there they are. Um, spirits yeah. can start with, um, uh, draining energy, things like that a mm -hmm. lot, a lot. Uh, but again, guys, the, the, it's easy for me to say, but it's the hardest part for any of us to do is in terms of just believing that you're sitting there and, oh, wow, here comes this scent coming through, or I'm feeling this, or, um, I, uh, or what, 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 where did that come from? Or it's uh, dad's pocket knife. One thing that happened to me was, um, my mother's been gone 10 years. I uh, took a key from her home before we sold it in Pennsylvania. It was a skeleton key from one of the doors. Mm -hmm. um, couldn't find it. Four years later, it uh, showed up in the middle of my dresser. And it's oh, always crazy. with me when I do reading. It's always with me when I do readings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that Sometimes, guys, they're called, and I don't want to get technical, apports. Uh, an apport is a gift from spirit. That can be a crystal that's in your way. Say you're out walking uh, the sidewalk and you look down and find a heart-shaped stone. To me, that is not a coincidence. To me, that is someone who is probably on your mind who has passed just showing their affection, whether it is a significant other or it has, in fact, been um, uh, a family member who's passed. Uh, you may find a shiny piece of uh, uh, crystal, such as quartz, rose quartz, in your path as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but apports, they're just like pennies from heaven as well. Uh, the feathers, I encourage people to keep the feathers. Now, if you have a pet parrot in your house like I do here, there's feathers all over the place. You know, So we try and temper that as well. But say I'm in the car and, hey, a feather shows up there. Well, that's a different story. It's a, that's usually my father because my father's mother, my grandmother, raised parrots. And I usually associate that with her. Excellent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, it's, I, I, so just got to be more aware, I guess, right? Yeah. It's all around us. You just have to be, you just have to develop the awareness. And Mike, not only the awareness, but sort of the trusting. And that's yeah. the hard part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. easy for us to debunk like orbs. And they're probably the easiest thing. Many people see a picture of an orb. Okay. And right away, is it dust? Could it be rain? Yeah, it could be. But if you get a picture of that and you zoom in on it, try and see a face in it. Many, many times you'll see faces in it. Wow. Uh, yeah, smiling, the eyes. It could look like almost like the man in the moon sometimes. Um, I find those a lot. There's a very active haunted uh, uh, facility near Newcastle, Pennsylvania. And the orbs that show up there in photos are phenomenal. Phenomenal. Um, one thing, too, when you get smells, I, I just want to mention this many times say you're uh, you're somewhere and the smell is rather rancid i uh, that's when i always say okay maybe you want to shut down uh ask your angels to come in i tend to and i'm not saying always 
I tend to associate some of the rancid smells with someone negative or someone unhappy who we don't need to uh, need them to come through. 99% of the time that occurs at some when I'm doing some sort of paranormal hunt or investigation. Um, one time it did happen. I picked up something, smell, rancid, whatever, and I kept I'm hearing the word chloroform, chloroform. Well, the place I was, here it turned out, chloroform is how they associated with the, um, she was a nurse who died, I think, 50 some years ago, who would assist the patients in crossing using chloroform. And, okay. and I didn't know any of this. Uh, the chloroform came through to me along with the rancid smell. And that's how I knew that was a spirit who was eh, probably not the best. So I, I made her go away and uh, protected myself more and did not bring anything home with her at all. Mm -hmm. But so, spirit signs are all over, all over. Um, it could be a flower showing up uh, in the middle of winter, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and guys, two people love to see rainbows. I, I, I would be very remiss if I didn't say that. Rainbows. If you have asked someone to show you a rainbow and you get one and that makes you feel all warm and fuzzy, by all means, that is them. Can it be rather common like the Cardinals? Yes, it can be. But if that's it and you have asked them, that's fine. Um, here's one thing I'm going to say, too, regarding the rainbow, the ladybug, Susie the dragonfly. Okay. Dragonflies, they don't have to be outside. You can be walking somewhere and a book or a magazine falls in your way with a picture of a dragonfly open, okay? That could still be someone who loved dragonflies in life, but in a different way, they put it right in your path, okay? Uh, you're opening a magazine and holy cow, there's a picture of a dragonfly. Well, that's grandma. There it is as well. It doesn't always have to be outside. Um, it's like the ladybug. You know, if someone associates uh, someone with a ladybug, middle of winter, you could be doing something and there could be you uh, open something and there's a ladybug in it or someone gives you a ladybug cookie and it dawns on you. Oh, wow. Hey, today's mom's birthday and she liked ladybugs. <laughs> That's one way, too. Yeah. Love it. I love it. Well, Greg, Greg, I appreciate your time this evening talking about uh, signs from spirit. As always, a pleasure to have you on. And uh, everybody, please, if you want to get in touch with Greg, that's how you can uh, find him down below mm -hmm. scrolling. Um, I friend him up because, I mean, he's yes. everywhere. He is everywhere. We've had some friends of the show that have gone out and seen him or, and are just blown away by Thank you. Thank by you. what he does. So I highly recommend that you go out and see Greg. So Greg, thank you very much for your time this evening. We great. Oh, my pleasure, it. guys. Always a good time being with you. And we hope to Thanks, have Greg. you back to see again, you again soon. Anytime, anytime. Nice meeting you, Susie. Bye, Greg. Nice to meet you too. Bye-bye. Well, I went backwards. Wait a minute. <laughs> Click the wrong thing. Um, so you have to be very, you know, you have to be very aware and, um, Bob, you have you struggle with self awareness, I believe. So you might have a hard time with, with getting signs from. I'm spirit. I'm going to have a hard time, I think, sending signs when I'm gone, and I'm going to try real hard. I've kind of made up my mind that I do want to haunt as much as I can. Uh, I do want to <laughs> I do want to continue to interfere and make people, you know, hopefully laugh from beyond the grave. But um, you know, we'll see. I'm just trying to figure out. I've already decided that I'm going to be really creepy about how I'm, you know, how my remains are um, handled. Um, <laughs> I've decided that cremation is the way to go, but I want to be mixed with like polyurethane and sprayed just kind of on, on most of my guitars. So just leave a little piece of me on all my guitars and then everybody has to keep them and they have to play them. Sorry. You can't and the just good look news, at it. And the good news about that is, Bob, that means you have to buy a lot more guitars. Yeah, well, or Between lose weight. Now and then. One of the two. <laughs> but although, I, was although I think I think most of this will just melt away. You know what I mean? So there's not there's a lot. The, the ashy parts are are going to be the same no matter what. I think. You know, like when you cook a hamburger, and most of like the fat just melts into that. Yeah, that doesn't turn into ash. I think. Oh, I think that that's when I get cremated. That most of that fatty stuff is just going to kind of get collected in the grease pan. <laughs> well, Bob, that's uh, 
On oh man, on that the is line. Bob. <laughs> yeah. Now hey, there's a pa- hey, there's hey, a pairing. What are, what are we gonna pair with with the Bob grease? Uh, where's the wine professor? What's uh, what's a good pairing for Bob grease there, Jared Gray? Well, a rosé, of course. Of course, a rosé. <laughs> yes, the f- top pick, rosé. <laughs> That's right. We can Rose- even do the one that we're doing tonight. Yeah, that, rosé that pairs perfect. really well with fatty foods. That's right. <laughs> How are you guys doing tonight? Fantastic. Very, Very good. good. Wonderful. What's Mike? Very is Mike, are you texting? Yeah. Oh. Are you texting? Are you shexting, which is show texting? Like yes. texting during I, the oh, show? That's right. I, I am. Yeah. I am. I think that's funny. You can always tell during Zoom meetings when people yeah. are texting. They're all trying not to look obvious, yeah, like, right? <laughs> I'm trying to look obvious. <laughs> or the right. pictures. Yeah. Well, I'm just trying. You, you, this is this is the segment where you just don't need me. Like, uh, no, what are you no. talking about? No, you're not Mike, just going to go into Zoom selfie mode right now. It's time to uh, engage and and yeah. learn something about wine. Right. Mike, Be where's engaged. your glass? Go I get your wine. Never, I will your never learn. Rose. I have I have a glass right here. Tell us about it. Okay. And do you have it's, a do you have a rosé? Did I bring have, the right Did I bring the right glass to the party? That should work. Yeah. It looks That'll the same shape as Susie's. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hang on. It looks second. very similar right. to your shape. So I was going through yes. my cupboard and I, I thought they were all wine glasses now and being a little more selective. Mm, very good. That? But I do kind of have a little bit of a bone to pick with you, uh, Mr. Wine Professor. And it's this. And that would be? The difficulty of finding these wines, unless, of course, you're going to home buys. Now, by all means... Everybody, I want you to go to home buys and buy your wine. It's not, it's just not practical for me. And um, I end up getting very, very short with all these wine store people that I call. Oh. That <laughs> they, they don't that, know what you're that, talking about. They, do they? they don't know, they either don't know what I'm talking about. They leave me on hold for 10 minutes and forget about me. And then I call back, <laughs> like, oh, the wine guy left at three. It's six. It, <laughs> hey, Bob. Yeah. Let's tell him to call Jared. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. I just, I, that's what I'm saying. It's just mm-hmm. impractical right. when I put it off to the last minute to try and find a bottle of wine <laughs> and then it becomes difficult to get. So I was unable to get um, the, well, I did get some Los Vascos. I got the Cabernet Sauvignon, which I'm going to try at another time. Yeah, because that's, that's a good $10 cab from Chile. Yeah, that'd be good. That. Paid more than that, Jerry. Oh, uh, you did. Oh, you, you got ripped. Home buys. But, you got ripped. Um, it's nine ninety nine. But I thought that this was a good substitute. Look at that, Snoop Dogg. This is Snoop Cali, Nineteen Crimes, Cali Rosé. He looks very intense about it. And I got to yes. say, it's really easy to drink. <laughs> and kind good. of, kind of tastes. A, it has. It tastes a little like brownies. Ooh. Oh, okay. Pot brownies. Okay. That's right. That, there you go. <laughs> now you got it. I'm on the right track. Mm-hmm. Well, All this right. evening, um, what I want to do is I want, um, since last time, everybody kind of beat me to the punch and poured their wine early. I want everybody to go ahead and pour their wine right now. So, Susie, do you have your wine? I do. Yeah. Okay. Does Mike have his wine? He does. All right. That doesn't look. He's got his plum wine in there. I yeah, the color is uh, you know. Yeah. He's no. cheating. So I want everybody to pour their wine into their glass. Get your get your glass. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to talk just a couple minutes about rosé, about chili, and then we'll we'll get some comments and talk about the color aroma and taste of this particular wine that we are drinking this evening. So go ahead, pour your glass. Uh, Bob, you you have some there? You ready to go? Very good. Okay, so I, I want to talk a little bit about rosés. So rosés traditionally get released every spring. So whatever year it is, so it's 2021, the fresh vintages should be 2020. Next year when it's 2022, we will see the vintages of 2021. So that's kind of how you're going to see rosés released. They get released in the spring. Hey, hang on. I hate to interrupt you, Jared. I, I just want to. I just want to point out because I don't want to sanction this behavior, Kim McBride. 
that we we do not recommend that you drive and watch the show at the same time. We do admire oh. your persistence and your loyalty, Kim, that uh, you're driving and watching at the same time. Please be careful. Yeah, she's it, it'll, so loyal. It'll yes. definitely look dark w- right now while you're driving. That's yes. careful, Kim. Yes. yes. <laughs> And, and Sorry, by I didn't the way, mean to interrupt, I, but I felt like from a, a legal standpoint, I should state that we do not in any way sanction uh, a responsible right. adult's yeah. response. Right. Yes. I'm I sure she you. pulled over to watch a show. <laughs> she, okay. says, she said she was at a light. So, all right. Oh, there we go. Well, we'll, well, we'll, we'll toast to you, but you good. also don't toast while driving. <laughs> <laughs> so, rosés are one of the fastest, most popular growing categories of wine. And traditionally, especially, you know, five, ten years ago, most of the rosés that were re- released were from Europe. Now, with it being so popular, we're seeing it from all over the world. Argentina, a little bit. Chile, as we're doing this evening. A little bit from Australia. There's tons coming out of California and Washington now. So the, the market's getting saturated, but it's still a popular category. And, and I think we're going to continue to see it grow. It might... I, th- I think it's just going to grow. Um, we might see less from Europe as we start to make more in the new world uh, with, you know, with California, and Washington. Mm-hmm. I-, I do notice the prices of the European rosés have gone up. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see where that goes. But uh, a little bit about um, uh, Chile. So Chile, uh, as we saw last time, is a, a very long, narrow country along the coast in in uh, South America. And right in the central of, yep, the uh, Colchagua Valley is where this Las Vascos is from. But um, Chile makes French grapes. So they grow French grapes, Cab, Merlot, Syrah, Mavergere, Chardonnay, Sauv Blanc. So they do all the same grapes that you're going to find in France. Uh, and they grow very well there. If you're ever looking for value wine, Chile is a great place to go. It's a great bang for your buck. Quality wine, dry, traditional. It's got its own little flair to it. Oh, chili. Very nice. Did you make that, Bob? I Ooh. did. It looks you delicious, did. doesn't it? Yeah, just. Well, very yeah. good. But um, the reason why I chose the Los Foscos is because I wanted to get a good priced rosé, $9.99. As I was saying before, a lot of these other rosés are getting a little pricier, $12.99, $13.99 and up. So I wanted to do a, you know, even $10 one, something that I had tasted before, a fresh new vintage. And this particular one is made from Syrah, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Maverdre. So all three French grapes, just like I was saying. And I think this is a great place to start. Um, just as I said, you know, Chile has great value wine. So, so here we go. And Susie, you are trying it this evening. And do you have cheese with this? Were you able to get any cheese? Mike forgot. Did Mike forget? Yeah. Jared? Yes, ma'am. I forgot the cheese. It was you. Well, actually, then, no, let's blame Mike then. I have a bunch of cheese upstairs. I could run and get some. Do you mind? Yeah. I don't, I... I don't mind at all. What kind of cheese we want? Yeah, I forgot. Actually, so, yeah. I've got some Gouda. Susie, I've got some smoked you. Gouda. I have some smoked horseradish cheese. I, I would go with some Swiss. Straight Gouda yeah. would be the best of, of everything you listed. Okay. So I no have Havarti. Gouda. I wouldn't do the smoked. Um, no, there's a couple cheeses that I mentioned last week. Feta, right. Appenzeller. Mm. I think I did say Havarti. Mm-hmm. And Havarti is something that you can you can easily find. I have yes, Bob. Havarti slices upstairs. There you, you go. Try that. Should I go get some? Sure. Okay. And Jared, this is supposed to be chilled, correct? Yes. You can chill it. It's a great patio wine. Mm-hmm. Uh, so rosé season is upon us. So there's the first couple uh, wines that I've seen from this 2020 vintage. I'm still waiting on more. We're going to continue to see them as the f- spring comes along. But these are great for now. Uh, they kind of transitioned you into the hot summer months. And I even still like uh, rosés even when it's 95 degrees in July. So I'll st- still drink them then as well as whites. 
But um, yeah, rosés are great. Now, here in the Midwest, a lot of people are under the impression that if it's pink, it's sweet. Well, that's not right. accurate. A true rosé is dry. There's a couple that would fall under that kind of off dry category with a little bit of sweetness with, you know, maybe a little bit of sugar on the tip of your tongue, but uh, far and wide, they are dry. Now a pink wine that's sweet should be referred to as a blush. Now that's a lot of the, the pink wines that we see in Ohio are technically blush. Um, but unfortunately here in Ohio, uh, they label them rosés, maybe because it sounds prettier than blush. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what the, what the deal with that is, but they are not true rosés. So Susie, yeah. you have had a sip. What, I did. what is your opinion here? I think is it's this delicious. your first rosé. Um, it's my first one. I, I mean, I think my dad used to drink a rosé wine, so I, had it years ago, but I did not remember what it tasted like. So I think it's delicious. I still prefer red, dry red. That's wine. fine. That's yeah. fine. But I think it's nice and I think it would be good on a hot summer day. Yeah. And and I think if you're getting into wine, I think it's actually really good to try different stuff. Even if it's mm -hmm. things that you're not familiar with, themes, things that you say, you know, I I really just don't like that grape. I don't like that style try a glass of it here and there kind of resets mm -hmm. your palate. It makes you appreciate things. You'll start to pick up other things and then you might come back to the one that you really love and end up loving it even more. And in the process, you're going to find a whole bunch of other things that, that you'll eventually, uh, you know, love as well. So mm -hmm. I, I recommend definitely getting outside of that, um, comfort zone, trying different things. And that's why one of the reasons why I chose this evening uh, this wine this evening for you because we had talked before and you really hadn't experienced a lot of rosé and the ones that you had were well quite a while ago as, right as it seems so yeah no I, I'm enjoying it so yeah yeah now, so Bobby says with goat great with goat cheese yes so no I, goat cheese I for think me. I think I had recommended a goat cheese last uh, week so man so Bobby. if no goat for me. I love the goat cheese. Oh, I no. Really do. No. Oh. <laughs> they, not, for, not for me. They are awesome. <laughs> ah, they're great. <laughs> ah, they're, they're ah, no. awesome. No. <laughs> now, Bob, I will probably do a couple more rosés as my wines of the week this spring okay. and summer. I do recommend getting one from Europe. So if, you know, if we can't meet or you can't find the one that I recommend, I recommend getting the traditional styles yeah. from Europe. They're a little bit more elegant. The, a lot of the ones out of California are um, very sweet. That one might be a tad off dry. Like you, I've, I've not tried it. It is brand new. Um, it's his newest, his newest yeah. venture. Uh, but it might have just a tad bit of residual sugar. I I'm not sure. Yeah, it um, seems it seems pretty sweet. It it's a low to me. It's what I'd call a low effort wine. You don't have to think about it a whole lot to drink. Yeah. It's very easy. It it doesn't offer anything in the way of tannins at all. It's just okay. It's, okay. Um, it's it's real. It's fruity, but it's light. It's not it's not a heavy sweet like you know like a. a like just, an Ohio grape would be, but it, it is a, it is a sweeter wine. Okay. It's not it, it it's very it's not very dry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Later I do on, like when with the Havarti. Okay. Later Greg, on, when do you it have gets any warmer. questions? Oh, sorry, Greg. Do you have any questions regarding uh, these wine selections? No, I don't. I've been listening. Very interesting, though, Jared, because both my wife and I like the rosés, and uh, every year we go to uh, wine country in New York with a group okay. of people in the yes. family. Oh, they're very yes, they, yeah, yes. fantastic, fantastic. Um, but Jerry, yeah, the uh, the uh, the rosés from Chile, I personally do in fact like. Oh, good, good. Yeah, there, no, I agree not... with you. There is a difference between at least a very uneducated palate, very uneducated between the uh, what we call a blush and a rosé. But uh, yes. that's just for me. But I agree, you're spot on. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, mm -hmm. and. As you will notice when you go to the store or when you come to my store, there's going to be a wide variety of pink colors, some very mm -hmm. light, 
some hewing on a salmon or maybe even an orange color. Some like Bob has there that's deep pink, almost, um, almost. That's a pretty pushing red. That's like a, a fair representation of the color too. It's it's about about like my shirt. Yeah. So you know, so you're going to get all different varieties of pink color, and that has to do with the grape. What grape they're using also has to do with the length of skin contact. So that'll that'll affect the the color. But I think I think this one in particular, I think this is a beautiful color. It's um it's got some depth to it. It's not too too dark, but it's not too light. It's got a really pretty pink traditional rosé color, I think. So we had a what, we had a rosé around the house um a couple of weeks ago and it was much drier than this. And it was and, probably and, and, and from Europe. It. Yeah. It was probably from Europe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just got this one because I thought it would be cool to have Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg. Shop, gotcha. Shop. So, <laughs> we, when you, one tour, we got, you know, so like most artists don't own their tour bus. They rent them mostly from Nashville. There's like two or three companies that kind of rent all the tour buses. I didn't know that. So when we know. rented our tour bus, for a tour a couple of years ago, the driver said, Snoop just had this bus. So we, I stayed, I maybe perhaps even slept in the same spot that Snoop did. And wow. I was, yes, I did search for doobies under the, um, <laughs> but we, we also brought enough of our own that we didn't have to look too hard. <laughs> it's tour. It's about the only time. It's about the only time in my life that it, it it's like a regular thing for like a month, and then I don't do it for a whole year. Bob, this is a family show. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, you know how we operate in my family, Mike Michael. It's with honesty, and it's with I don't want to I don't want to make it like it's it's a mystifying thing. It's just it's a thing, and there's there's a, in my opinion there's a way to enjoy it responsibly. So family show. I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to demonize it. And make it to be something like uh, family, that, that, that you, family you know, the show. curiosity will be greater if if Bob, you demonize. Did you know I'm a principal? Yeah. Remember, remember, I'm principal. Yeah, yeah. Susie okay. wanted to talk about what the wine tastes like. No. <laughs> Susie, don't smoke weed in school. I'm telling you, that's I, I. You know, I didn't. I didn't even do it at all during my entire school career. How's that? So okay. you put your glasses on. Do you have you your wouldn't have been in my office your, then. Do I don't. I don't recommend it. On? Yes. There oh, go. I'd have been Bob. in your office, but Bob's for got different reasons. Many different reasons. <laughs> oh, I, I yeah. <laughs> so I'm sorry. I hijacked the show again. <laughs> no, Jared, it was very funny. Jared, Jared, continue on. It was very funny. Sure. It was very funny. So, so Susie, since you tried this, and if any of our other listeners have tried this. Um, is there is there any notes that you're getting to this? Any any fruit flavors for me? Yes. Any any, any notes? Any yeah? What well, are you tasting? It are you tasting? Hmm. This isn't a trick question. This is okay. All, thank you. It's not a trick question. I'm not trying to uh, you, trick I, you. I'll here. tell you what I appreciate about it because I thought it was going because I love dry wines because mm -hmm. I always drink the reds. Yeah. And so what I appreciate appreciate about it is it's a refreshing chilled wine that's still dry. Yes. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Right. As far as hints, I mean it, it has a little bit of a berry. Yeah. Yeah. Hint to it. Is that my is that good? No, is that yeah, good, yeah. Darren? Yeah, kind of like crushed raspberry. Yes. Some, some strawberry notes to it. Yeah. And it actually if you Sip it and think about it long enough. You will taste kind of like a pink grapefruit. And you it need to meditate well. on it, like Greg said. Are we yeah, drinking right. the same Sip wine? And I, no, you're not, Mike. <laughs> and that's the great you're thing about that wine. Garbage plum wine. Oh, are this, you drinking? This, are you are you drinking a different that, wine? This yeah, plum he, wine he by Kinkoman. Like Kinkoman. It's rotten. I can't drink that stuff. <laughs> I took one sip of that rosé and I was like, "Are you got to be kidding me?" Hey, hey, you got any soy sauce you can drink? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Susie, that's it. All right, so anyways, um 
Continue on, Jared. Hey, well, Jared, that- how long should you chill teriyaki before you pour yourself a glass? Oh, about at least 45 minutes. So, Greg, um, yeah. what what do you think about all this wine talk that's been going on? I, I'm just, I find I'm it sure educational. Um, I'm fascinated with it, to be honest with you. But from my standpoint, I never drink when I know I'm going to be working. Ah, good. Because I prefer to have everything come through naturally without any oh, enhancements, because frankly, a lot of times people may even accuse us of, well, it's the liquor or what have you talking, not the spirits or your own. It's a different type of spirits, Mike. Right, 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 right. Well, yeah. and, and since you're always working, you're never drinking because Very you're rarely you're constantly anymore. working. Very rarely anymore, you know, too. And one thing uh, my wife uh, told me when I was off screen here, too, songs on the radio. All at once, you can hear a song on the radio. I, I should have mentioned that. That reminds you of someone who's gone. That's another great sign. Um, but in terms of the wine, yeah, I've, I've always been fascinated uh, by it. Uh, and uh, I agree with Jared about the uh, rosé from Chile. But I never drink uh, at all when I know I'm going to be working. I uh, it just um, I, I prefer to have everything come uh, normally without any help. Okay. Very good. All right. Here we go. And Bob's got to be back in the center. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So, I don't know uh, how you uh, ended up with plum wine. I, I told well, him not to buy it, but he did. He he just wanted it so bad, so I allowed him. Want to try some rice vinegar next time? Is it sweet? No, it's dry. No, it's I gotta more, have. I like sweet. a little 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 dry. The the rice vinegar is on the drier side. Um, by the yeah. way, uh, Greg, uh, Bobby says she loves to drink and work. Uh, okay. <laughs> and it, it, it helps her paint. So well, you might hey, want to hey, consider that. You never know what we'll all be seeing. There you go. It's like, sounds like it's Susie may need some too with her profession. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so, uh, Jared, what do you, do you have anything for next week? For next week? I do not. So okay. I will um, come on and I'll introduce a new wine of the week. As Ted Nugent said, it's a free for all. It will be. Yes, it will be. So, wow. yeah, excellent. Well, everybody, thank you very much, uh, Jared. That was a fun time tasting the wine and listening to Bob. And I always love have for fun Snoop Dogg. Um, so, Bob, do you... Uh, Bob, do you uh, want to uh, take us out? Next week, we have Mike Bonanno coming on. Might as well, um, right? Well, yeah, first, and... um, before we get too excited, hang on, before we get too excited here, bring that down. Um, Miss Susie, what did you learn yeah. today? What did I learn? Do you really want to? Uh, one thing I learned is, you know, Greg was talking about all the people that have passed and, their, and the signs. It made me think about we need to appreciate the people that are still in our lives even more so. Absolutely. And appreciate the time that we have with them. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Very good point. Good point. Pr- professor. Yeah, I learned about all these different signs that are all around us that uh, Greg was telling us about. And it made me kind of think. And reflect, and I was trying to remember as he was talking, have I experienced these things and maybe not known it at the time? Mm-hmm. And so I have I was very interested. So I'm kind of reflecting and going back in my own mind and experience and seeing seeing if maybe I did see some things there that, that I didn't know at the time. Good. Very good. If you need help, please contact me, guys. Let me know. And uh, Greg, what did you learn today? I learned that I learned more about wine, but I also learned a lot about Bob. So how's that? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I I learned uh, not today, but one time when I was working in the pizza joint that you can absolutely smoke weed and still run a pizza store. Um, no, okay. I <laughs> family show. I'm sorry, God, I. 
You know, this rosé has gone straight to my head, Professor, and uh, I'm, I'm uh, the inhibitions are, it's, uh, they're getting snoopish. Um, I, I learned that I should probably, when I see a sign, I should not chalk it up to coincidence as often as I do. I should exactly. be a little more sensitive because I do believe that there are, um, there are opportunities to um, connect with the people that... Um, I, uh, that I care about and who've cared about me in the past and, and that uh, we can see each other again or, or kind of communicate a little bit. So yeah, and, I think that that's a don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid yeah. to ask for signs, guys. Yeah. I get, I get, I think we talked about it before. I get a lot of my communications through dreams. I, yes. Much of it. And some of it's kind of direct. Some of it's in metaphor and some of it's, yeah. you know, I think just because I want to. Um, Mike Stouffer, what did you learn today? I learned that tour buses are rented mm -hmm. and not owned. I thought that was a very important uh, piece of information. Mm -hmm. I learned that I think if you just relax in life, you will see more signs from spirit go. than ever before. And maybe some of your own, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, so, you, you, mm -hmm. there are things in your own spirit that you don't recognize because you don't take the time to pause Bob, and Bob, reflect. Bob, 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 this is my time of talking about what I've Oh, I'm sorry. I was just agreeing with you. I, I the pause. Okay. <laughs> the pause. Yeah. And I learned that plum wine is still better than rosé. <laughs> I can't even imagine it's that that's any good. Oh, oh it's fantastic. I mean, just because it's, I mean, I guess it's got to be just, it's, it's something that's designed for cooking, right, Professor? It's not. People drink it, but yeah, they're not supposed to. Not much. No, no, no they're supposed to make <laughs> Bob, sauces you, that you pour over, like <laughs> hibachi, or something Bob, like that. Do you that. always do what you're supposed to do? It is the end of the show. <laughs> Once again, thank you for coming to I Didn't Know That. We'll see you next week with Mike Bonanno. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Miss Susie. Thanks, Professor. See you next week. <laughs>